How's it going, everybody? Jersey Crit, welcome. <clears throat> Who else we got in here tonight? Anybody new? I did not mean for that to be so freaking loud. Can't control the volume of my voice. So yeah, as you can see by the uh, thanks jersey, by the uh, title, we're going to be doing some uh, Zeppelin rips. Uh, those will be different ones than we've done. You know, than we've done we've done Zeppelin riffs on the live streams a couple of times. But and there's a link in the description where you can download the uh, download the tabs. Uh, I was looking at them before I got on, and I'm the one that put it together. And I are and I can already see where there's a problem. <laughs> there's there's actually a little section missing of one of them. Uh, but I'll just play it really slow. You'll be able to get it. But other than that, everything looks good. All right. So, yeah. So, like I said, you can get the – click that link in the description, get your tabs, and we can get going with this. see here oh and right off the bat the uh the very first one which is also the one that has the part missing is actually in drop d it's moby dick so you will for this particular one need to be in drop d so just tune your low e down to your d string or use your tuner if you have a tuner all right whoops i almost just clicked the button that would have ended all of this that would have really that would have sucked <clears throat> all right so this um this riff for moby dick is it's kind of more like a bass line, sort of, because it's just all single notes. There isn't any chords. So it's just a little melody, and it's following a, um, like a blues, like a, like a blues progression. So we're starting off here. We've got uh, uh, the low E string open, but again, we're, we're tuned down a half step. So we're to, or a whole step. We're tuned down to D. So this is all uh, made up of shapes that are a whole step apart from each other so it makes it really easy You're, you can play the whole thing just about with just your first and second finger if i remember yeah you can play the whole thing with just your first and third finger whoops all right so that's the first part of it we're just going to start off we're going to play the open low e and this is an eighth note so this is one and then on the end of one fifth fret of the a string Welcome, Lynn. Yeah, we're going to do some uh, Zeppelin. There's a link in the description where you can download the uh, the tabs. Uh, so the the timing for this, like the first two notes here, these are eighth notes. So it's one and, and then starting on beat number two, it's uh, 16th notes. So we've got, we play that fifth fret of the A string again, two, E, and uh, so just three, five, three, five. So you get this. Now, when we hit this five here, it's it's the last 16th note of beat number two, but it's actually tied to the downbeat of uh, beat number three. And you want to throw a little, little vibrato on there. So, because it's going to be ringing out. So. All right, then after you let that ring out, so that's ringing out on the downbeat of three. And then on the end of three, we're gonna hit the fifth fret. And then, and this is where it gets kind of weird to, to, to kind of count it because these last, these, the at the very end of that has this kind of, 
it almost feels like it's like out of time or whatever, because it's not landing just like right on the downbeat, like, you know, what we're used to. So we're hitting this five here on the, uh, let's see, how would we count that? So we hit the five where it's ringing out on, on the downbeat of three, three, E, and, uh, four, four, yeah, I'm not, it's really weird because it's a, it's a 16th note and then two eighth notes and then a 16th note. So it's, it's a thing that you're really going to kind of have to feel it. So you get that. So it, uh, it just, you know, it's got that groove. That's what makes it cool. Like lots of Zeppelin to, uh, things is, is the groove. Okay. So then, like I said, it's like a, kind of like a blues where it, it moves up and we're moving up a, uh, a, uh, a fourth because up a fourth or no, actually that wouldn't be up a fourth. That would be, uh, Actually, we're going, we're going uh, down. So now what we're going to do is we're going to come up. We're going to play the fifth fret. We're going to. It's the same timing. It's exactly the same riff. We're just playing the notes in a different place. So we're going here from the fifth fret, and then we're going to skip the A string and go to the fifth fret of the D string. So the re reason I'm using my second finger here and not my first is because then we're going to have to go down to the third fret. So if we go. So it's just like the beginning one, but it's then to the A string, three, one with some vibrato, three, one, three, one, and it repeats just like the other one. And then back to... Okay, so now this is where there's the part that I said that, it, that it's missing, that, and it's my fault. I'm the one that I'm not sure how I how I managed to do it, but there's a part that I skipped. So when it goes to it, would be like you know your five chord. Let's see. Yeah. Okay. So now our bass notes the open A string. So we're gonna go that to the seventh fret on the D string. So we're open seven, seven, five to seven on the A string. Then back to the seven on the D. So back to the seven on the A, to the five on the D. Then we have to do this. Uh, we have to, we're basically going to move it down a whole step. But you have to slide into it from below. So you got the. So I'm just doing like a slide from nowhere into the fifth fret of the D string. So five, 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 three, five. Let's see. Yeah. Then a slide from nowhere to seven on the G string. Yeah. To seven to five, then to seven on the D string, to five and down to three, and then the whole thing would start over again. So. have myself And I apologize for that last part not being in the on the tab because I'm not exactly sure how I managed to do that. Uh, 
but I ain't got no one to blame this time but me. But the rest of them are, are okay. So does anybody have any questions on that one or just any guitar related questions in general? Doesn't have to be about, uh, about that particular riff or anything like that. And uh, if you like what I'm doing, uh, show me some love, hit that thumbs up button, all that, you know, interaction, everything helps with that whole, you know, mysterious YouTube algorithm thing. But mostly it just shows these guys that I'm, that you like what I'm doing and I can continue to do this for you. And this is the only one that's in drop D. And if you're just joining us, there is a link in the description where you can uh, download the tabs. Okay, wow, this one's like kind of trickier than I remember it being. So this is uh, from the ocean. And again, uh, this one is just single note. So it's, you know, kind of, you know, you know, typically that should make it easier, especially if you're a beginner, you know, not having to, you know, play chords or about two at the same time. Fog hat, that could be arranged. Uh, okay, so we're going to start off, we're on the fifth fret of the D string with your first finger, and we're going to do, we're going to pick that and do a hammer on to seven, but it's, um, the five is, uh, like a, um, like a ghost note, so it, it's not really part of the, uh, um, the count, so you don't want, you want... So it's kind of like you, you're picking and hammering almost simultaneously. And we're going to do that twice. And then five on the D string to seven on the A string with your third finger. And then eight on the, uh, the low E string. So that what we're doing there, that's just a C major triad. Now on there it has it as with just a rest, but um, I don't know why I always want to do that slide. So if I do that and you're wondering like, why isn't that the way on the tab? It's just, it's a Darrenism. I throw in, I throw in extra stuff that isn't, isn't supposed to be there necessarily. Uh, or maybe he does that sometimes. I can't, you know, I can't remember, but we have that. And then we rest, we have a half note, um, a half note rest. Hello, Joseph, um, welcome. Uh, we're only on the second one. We, uh, we did uh, Moby Dick. So, uh, one and two, one and two, and one and two, and three, four, and then we rest on um, three and four. Then you're going to go to uh, the A string, five, and this is the part that's kind of kind of tricky. That was uh, that was I was getting hung up on earlier. We're going to go five, seven, five. So we're on the A string, five to seven, and then five on the D string, and then back to five on the uh, A string. And then, so five, seven, five, five, seven, seven. I guess if we think about it that way. Now, this is also... Uh, this part of it's in seven eight. That's why it's kind of weird sounding. So, 
So if we split that in half right there, maybe that'll make it maybe that'll make it easier way to practice it. So if we're gonna go five seven five five seven seven, then we're gonna have to shift your first finger down. So this is like the second half now. Four on the A string to seven on the D string, and then five on the A string to seven, and then the whole riff just starts over again. So the All right, whoops. Go again with the slide. Whoops. It's that transition of shifting my hand position down uh, that screws me up. Um, for me, it's easy. It's much easier if I'm doing a shift like that if I'm ascending than if I'm descending. Um, and I just kind of notice that just kind of seems to be. I think that's kind of the typical the typical thing. Right, yeah, so that is the ocean riff. Gosh. Hello, Rick, welcome. Yeah, you're not too late. We've only we've only gone through two, uh, uh, Moby Dick and the ocean. And you can always watch the rerun. All right, so does anybody have any questions about that one, about, about the ocean? Or if you missed a question on the first one, or you just got guitar-related questions in general, that's cool too. It doesn't have to be about said riffs. And if you like what I'm doing, it would be really cool of you if you could hit that thumbs up button. Show me some love. Hello, Andy. Welcome. That sounded like Pantera, I'm Broken in intro. Hmm, I'd have to listen to that. Yes, Lynn, it is totally a, uh, um, it's a, it's a classic group. Cool. This is a lot of the, the things that I learned how to play very early on because they were, uh, easy for me. I, I had a, a hard time with like doing chords at first. So I, I really gravitated to more things like this that didn't you know that didn't require as much you know trying to hold down multiple strings and whatnot the begin the that part andy is that what you mean yeah i'll have to check it out i mean that's a pretty uh um Kind of a, a a garden variety type way to play. There's lots of songs that have that in there in the riff. I've got you know Guns N' Roses song. There's lots of stuff that has stuff like that. So it very well could. All right, all right. So I guess we can just move right along. Um, so the next one we're going to look at actually does have a couple chords in it. Um, we're going to do uh, how many more times? So it it starts off it's with a more single string riff and again more of like very similar to like a bass line kind of a thing. The... Whoops. So open low E string 
and then to the seventh fret on the A string, to the fifth fret, and then back to the seven, and then back to five on the A string. So this is a, a quarter note, so this is beat one. One, two, E, and three, four. So it, it's just beat. Or wait a minute. Oh, that's a dotted. I can't. Yeah, dotted eighth note. So that timing's kind of weird between there to. I guess that's on B3. So one, two, E3. Yeah, that's weird. It's just got that swing. So that's the first first measure. Second measure, open, low open low E string, then to seven on the A, five, back to seven on the low E, and then back to five on the A string. And then that just whole sequence repeats. So Okay, so it has that repeating, and then it goes to a D. So you could display the open chords down here, but if you do the the uh, the bar chords here, then you can kind of stay all in this area, and that's the way he's he's doing it. Um, I I believe. So just a regular D major bar chord with your root note on the A string. So. Uh, you just got to pick up the seventh fret of the D, G, and B string. I was using my third finger. And then the fifth fret of the A string. So that's our D. And then we're going to go to an, to an A. So to make the transition to the A, you just scoot your first finger down. So now you're, pick, you're getting all six strings, barring. Uh, middle finger on the sixth fret of the G string, and then the seventh fret of the A string with your third finger, seventh fret of the D string with your fourth finger. So it's like the E major shape. So, so that strum, it's three. Da -da -da. It's a sixteenth note, and then a dotted eighth note, and then a quarter. So it's like fast, medium slow you know like how far it's ringing out bam, bam, then go to the a do the same thing bam, bam, and then the whole thing would just start over again Yeah, so that one, that one's like the notes, everything are really easy to play, you know, you know, relative, I guess, to your experience, but it's the timing on it that I think is just kind of weird. Uh, the having that, that same, that same dotted eighth note and the 16th note thing, but instead of having it be on beat two, it's on beat four on the second measure. So it just makes it have that weird kind of, I you know, cool. I guess it's not really weird, unusual. So that is how many more times? So does anybody have any questions about that one or anything? Oh, you're having a bad signal? Like uh, it's laggy? Anybody else having that problem? Thank you. 
that. Huh. Okay. Well, I just want to make sure it wasn't on my end. Uh, the, we have a lot of problems with the internet here. Like it'll be great. And then it'll just get really crappy and there doesn't seem to be any reason, you know, for it whatsoever. Dotted eight note. Are you asking what a dotted eighth note is, Lynn? Is that what? So the next one uh, we're going to look at is the Lemon Song. So uh, this one, this one's got a, a, a chord in it, um, one that we've done before, uh, a seven sharp nine, it's like the Hendrix chord. So we start off with this, um, and you're going to have to... Uh, if you know if you if you play with the pick you're going to have to hybrid pick this part of it because what we're going to do is we're going to play notes on the low e string that are going to change but simultaneously we're going to be playing the b string open so how i do it is i just i use the pick to play the you just hold the pick with my you know, like hybrid pick and my thumb and my first finger holding the pick and then i use my middle finger to pluck the other string so we've got Oh, okay, real quick, I want to answer uh, Lynn's question, just because, I mean, there could be others that don't understand. Okay, so a, a, a note that is is dotted just means that you're going to take 50% of its value and add to it for it to ring out. Hello, Glenn, welcome. So uh, in the case of a dotted eighth note, you would, if you split an eighth note in half, you get to 16th note. So you would take the eighth note and you would let it ring out for the duration of an eighth note plus a 16th note because you're adding half of it to it. So if it was a dotted quarter note, then it would be, it would get a beat plus a half of a beat because it would, if you could cut a quarter note in half, you get two eighth notes. So a quarter note plus an eighth note. I hope that, I hope that answers your question and makes, uh, makes sense. Okay. So, for this part here, we're getting, we're, like I said, we're playing the low, low, the low E string open, and I'm plucking the B string with my my middle finger here. And this is this is eighth notes. So we've got one and. Then we're going to go to the fourth fret for two and, then to the fifth fret for three and. And then we're going to go to the seventh fret on four and then slide out of it for the and of four. So you got, whoops, whoops, I already forgotten what I just read. There we go. Now we hit on the and of four, the open low E string. So it's like one and two and three and four and. Then this is where we're going to do that E7 sharp nine. So seventh fret of the A string with your middle finger, second finger. 
then the sixth fret of the D string with your first finger, then the seventh fret of the G string with your third finger. So it's like your B7 shape, like down here, we're just doing it up here. And then we're gonna take your pinky and we're gonna go to the eighth fret on the B string. Now, we're only hitting those strings, but in this particular, and this is a movable shape, by the way, it's like a bar chord, but the, uh, you're welcome, Lynn. I hope I hope that answered answered your question. Uh, you could, since it's an E, you could play the the low E and the high E string both with this, and it would sound good. But that that isn't what he's doing. So we hit this on the downbeat of one. Well, for all of one, so it's like one, and then we rest on the downbeat of two, and then on the and of two we hit it again. So one, two, and now. That is an eighth note, but it's tied to uh, the third beat, which is a quarter note. So, uh, so Lynn, this is like another way you can actually think about the a dotted note. So in this case here, if you look on that second measure here on the Lemon Song, it shows that chord on one, and then we rest on two, and then on the end of two, we hit it again, but it's tied to a quarter note. So it's gonna be the same thing if it was a dotted quarter note, it would ring out for that same amount of time. So we're letting that ring. And then uh, he likes like slides in out of it like that. I don't usually ever do that part because I don't, I don't know, it doesn't sound cool when I do it at all. <laughs> so how I do this, I go one, two, and three and then start over. Whoops. Maybe just slide out of it like that, but it was like, slides around like that. And like I said, it just doesn't really sound all that cool when I do it. That's the riff from the Lemon Song. So does anybody have any questions about that one or any other guitar related questions? And I have to always say that because if I don't, people start asking like either really weird questions or they want to start talking about politics or something. And I would, you know, just rather do about anything else than that. And for those of you who maybe are just joining, um, there is a link in the description where you can uh, download the tabs. All right, so this next one here is probably the hardest one out of all of these, in my opinion, or at least thus far. Wait, 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 let me see what comes after that to make sure I don't. Yeah, okay, so this is definitely the immigrant song, yes. That's that's uh that's coming too. Uh this is uh good times and bad times. And this one's got chords plus some uh single note riffs, but this this sequence in part of this, at the last part of it, is it's just really awkward, and I've always really had a hard time being able to play it. Uh and I think it's really cool. I don't know what it is. It's just that my my fingers like betray me often on this one and don't do what I what I tell them to do. Uh, so this one we start off. We've got chord. We've just got a we've got a regular old E five. So uh, low E string open, and then I'm on the seventh fret of the A string with my first finger, and then the ninth fret of the D and G string with. Uh, uh, my third finger. You could do it like that, or you can just do it this way. You may as well just do it this way because here in a minute, 
he actually does full on E major and adds the, because this is one, five, and eight. So when you add the, the ninth fret on the B string, that's your major third, it makes it a major chord. So we start off, we hit this as two eighth notes right on the downbeat of one. So we've got one and, and then we're going to rest two, three, four. So three, four. And that's got to repeat. So we do it again. So you got one and two, three, four, one and two, three, four. And then, uh, so that's the first measure. And then um, on the second measure, we do that same thing, but this time we're gonna slide out of it. Instead of it being two eighth notes, it's an eighth note and then a quarter note. So what what did that mean? What that's going to do is it's going to give us the same, but we're going to slide out of it. So we'll have one and two, and then we rest on the and of two and three four. All right. So that's our. Well, I'll just start from the first of that again. So we've got. It. Okay, that's the easy part. Now we're to the part that's hard, the part that like, uh, I have some issues with. So if we just take this shape and we move it down a whole step here. So uh, we're actually would be D5. So my first finger's over the fifth fret and my third finger's here over the seventh fret. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna play the fifth fret of the A string and then the seventh fret of the D string and then with your third finger, just roll up. So this is like that, like blues, well, not really blues, first, you know, exclusively, but a little pentatonic thing that we've done, you know, the rolling finger, rolling finger technique. So we're gonna hit that five, seven, seven on the G string, roll back to seven on the D string, back to seven on the G string, back to the D string again. So we get this. So you don't want you don't want to hear the notes ringing over the top of each other. So that's why I do this little roll the little rolling technique. It's really weird, is it? I if I try to play it really slow, I like screw up. But but if I play it a little bit faster, I, it's easier. Okay. One E and a two E. And now this is where it gets the part with it that screws me up that where it, uh, where I, I just have a hard time with is we're gonna have to shift down to the fourth fret on the D string and then back to seven. So this is kind of similar to that change on, uh, on which one was it that had the Oh, on uh, on the ocean, it had a similar thing. It was on the A string, though, where it, where it had it. But you have to sh where you have to shift down like that. Like I said earlier, if if, if I'm shifting up, I don't have as much of a problem. But when I go down, I I have a, I have issue. Um, all right, so we got that five seven 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 five. Now we're gonna have to shift down a half step fourth fret of the D string to the seventh fret. So I use my pinky, then to the fourth fret on the, on the A string. We hit that twice to five and then six. We had the little chromatic walk up and then it just starts over again. See? So that part I think is is kind of tricky. So you got or shoot. 
trying to, I'm playing and then trying to read at the same time. You can't tell the difference between what? Let me try that again. So. Yeah, it's like I cannot get into like a the right kind of a groove, you know, sequence or whatever to get it to play that and make it, it really be smooth. I think it's like really uh, a really cool riff, but it's definitely the hardest one on this list, in, in in my opinion. But that's but that's it. When you, uh, I would practice that part separately. So you kind of just get used to that, that transition. You have trouble with that part too, Rick? Yeah, I, I think that most people would agree, you know, uh, that especially when you're first starting to try to play it, it it's it's just really awkward, but it's a really cool, cool riff. Uh, uh, where, where Jimmy Page sometimes, you know, has lacked in maybe, you know, the cleanliness department on some things, he, he more than makes up for it in like really cool riffs. But again, just my my humble opinion. All right, so does anybody have any questions about that one? Good times, bad times? All right, well, then we can move along. This is the last one. Uh, and uh, this is for you, Crit. Immigrant song. So uh, this is a a really, really simple riff. This first part of it is just like really, really easy. But it's the it's the timing and the groove on this that makes it really cool. It's it's just it's one note technically, but it's uh, you're playing in an octave higher. So we, we've got an F sharp here on the second fret of the low E string, and then we're going to skip a string and skip a fret. So now we're on the fourth fret of the D, of the D string, which is also a, an F sharp. This is why. <laughs> well, thanks, Jersey. I would have to be one hell of a good actor to be able to portray up to, to uh, put off any sort of a vibe that I'm I'm perfect. I'm pretty I'm pretty freaking far from that. Uh, you know, I don't mind it. You know, coming on here, screwing up. I mean, it's going to happen. I could practice. I could practice this crap all day long, and I could. St I would still make mistakes. Uh, but it just doesn't bother me as much anymore. You know, uh, if I screw up on here, I screw up on here. But uh, maybe that could be inspiring to some people to know that. Okay, yeah, you know, I can do this. If I can play, anybody can play. Really, I mean, there's nothing special about me. I have no. You know, I have more genetic limitations than advantages for being a musician. I got little hands. You know, I, 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 it's just, 
it's practice is what it all comes down to. But this riff is pretty easy. We just got this single note. We got this F sharp here and then here. So you can actually just keep both of your fingers on here. Now, you want your, if you're going to do it that way, you want to have your first finger so it's kind of, when it's fretting the low E, the pad of your finger, you want it to kind of be touching the A string just so it's muted because you don't want, you don't want to hear that. You just want these two isolated notes. So, like I said, it's just the same note. It's pretty easy. We've got, we play it one on the downbeat of one, and that's an eighth note. And then the and of one is split into two sixteenth notes. So, so like long, short, short. And then on the downbeat of two, we're going to play uh, the, the fourth fret of the D string, you know, the other F sharp. Now that's a 16th note. And then we come right back to, uh, to the second fret of the, uh, of the low E string. So we got the, and then you're going to take your first finger and just going to, you're not going to remove it, but you're just going to release the tension. So that way you can just pick the string and get, uh, get that percussive sound. So you got the, and then it just repeats. So that's the first two beats. The riff is. And then it just, you know, it just keeps repeating over and over again. Now, let's see. I guess I'm alternate picking that. I was trying to figure out like a would be the best way to, to pick it. I mean, you could play the whole thing with downstrokes, but it's if you... Like that. So that's like the main meat and potatoes of the riff. So you're going to do that um, uh, three times, just like that. And then on the fourth time, you're going to start off with the, the three notes on the low E, same timing, eighth to sixteenth. And then we're just going to go to an A chord, A major chord. So A string is open, and I'm just barring the second fret of the D, G, and B string. And that's and this is a quarter note, so it's on the it's on beat four. And then we just go to an E major chord, just regular E major chord, you know, and that's a whole note. So this is four, one, two, three, four. And then on the next measure, we strum this again as a half note. So it gets two beats, one, two, three, four. So on beat three, we get it again, E. And then on beat four, it's the A, and then the whole thing just starts over again. So you got so yeah so that that's um it's not a really difficult riff but it just sounds really cool what a lot of these are good for too is that since the timing isn't just everything isn't just always just landing all you know happy on the downbeat it's got some of these notes that are in kind of weird places well weird to us other other cultures it would be the way we do music is probably weird to them but 
uh, yeah, so that's uh, that's the immigrant song. Uh, the gaming G, why when I do power chords, it sounds muted. Um, okay, so are you still there? First of all, I guess before I get involved, because I'm not, I'm, I want to clarify as to what you're asking. So yeah, so that is the immigrant song and the six riffs that I had prepared for you by Zeppelin. So does anybody have any questions about any of the stuff that we've gone over or any just guitar related stuffs? All right, so I guess the gaming G dude left. Uh, he asked why it sounds muted when he does power chords, but uh, I'm not 100% sure, you know, what he means. Wanted to clarify with that. But we got a little time if anybody else has any any questions. And if you like what I'm doing, I know I've said this will be the third time, but show me some love. Hit that thumbs up button. Leave a comment. All that stuff really helps, you know, with the whole, you know, YouTube algorithm thing, but mostly it shows them I'm doing a good job and that you are digging what I'm doing and I can continue to do it. Oh, well, thank you, Glenn. You are most, most welcome. All right. Well, another one in the books this went really good tonight uh you know anytime it goes nice and smooth and i don't feel like i'm gonna have an aneurysm you know before it's over okay crit so it's i guess it's not uh well, hopefully it's not the internet here. I usually, when it's on my end, will actually get little warnings that are saying, hey, you know, it's not working right, but I haven't gotten anything like that. You are most welcome, Rick. Thank you. Well, thank you everybody for coming out. I really appreciate it. Um, I will be here uh, next week. Uh, same time, Ashley is next. Oh, next when? Next is the is the fifth of July. Okay, I was going to say if it's the fourth of July, then you know none of y'all probably going to be here either. But uh, thanks everybody for coming out. Really appreciate it. Um, and I will catch you all next week. Have a great week, everybody. Have a good, uh, say, 4th of July, all that stuff. Later on, my friends.